Right, so for the next part of our Java tutorial, we're going to start looking into what objects are, um, as well as classes. So if, if we consider the real world, we can find many objects around us, cars, dogs, humans, etc. All these objects have a state and a behavior. For instance, if we think about a dog, its state is its name, breed, color, Essentially, it's adjectives that can describe it. <clears throat> its behavior is barking, running, wagging its tail, all those types of things. If you compare a software object with a real-world object, they have very similar characteristics. Software objects also have a state and a behavior. The software object's state is stored in fields, and its behavior is shown via methods. So in software development, Methods operate on the internal state of an object, and the object-to-object -object communication is done via methods. A class in Java, for instance my class, is a blueprint, is a blueprint from which individual objects are created. I'm going to show you an ins like a better example of a class right now. So let's just delete all this and create a dog class. If you guys aren't understanding everything about this right now, don't worry. This is one of the things that's better shown by just watching and programming along. So let's create class dog. So we're going to give it a few adjectives or states. We'll go. So those are all the adjectives or states that are going to be used to describe the dog. We're going to be able to pass different values to that so we can give it different like attributes. I had to go fix my touchpad there. The sensitivity was way down. I was messing with the cursor. So now let's give it a few behaviors, essentially things that the dog can do. These functions aren't, these methods aren't going to return anything, so we're going to give them the return type of void. What else do we want it to do? We want it to be able to eat. And let's make it sleep too. So a class can contain any of the following variable types. Local variables, which are defined inside methods, constructors, or blocks. These variables will be declared and then initialized within the method, and the variable will be destroyed when the method is completed. Instance variables, which are variables within a class, but outside any method. These variables are initialized when the class is instantiated. Instance variables can be accessed from inside any method, constructor, or block of that particular class. And finally, class variables, which are variables declared within a class outside any method with the static keyword which means they're not going to change. So when talking about classes, one of the most important subtopics would be constructors. Every class has a constructor. If we don't want to explicitly write a constructor for the class, the Java compiler will build a default one for that class. Each time a new object is created, at least one constructor will be invoked. The main rule of constructors is that they should have the same name as a class. A class can have more than one constructor as well. Let's delete all this and show you an example of a constructor. Let's make it a puppy this time. This is the constructor here. Give it a name. This constructor only has one parameter, as you can see here, name. So now I'm going to show you how to create an object from a class. So to do this, you're probably going to want to do something when the user creates a class. 
something with this name thing, name variable. So let's just have the um, have the program print out the name when the object is created. So we're going to go, again, don't worry about this system that out that print line stuff. This is just Java specific that you're really not going to need for Android right now. This is a good time to bring up string concatenation. So if you want to add a variable onto a string, this is how you do it. You put in whatever string you want to print out, put a space in there if you need to, and you can just use a plus sign in the variable. The variable does have to be of type string though. <coughs> Always remember your semicolons with Java. So let's go ahead and create the main function that's going to be run when the program starts. So we're going to go Just remember in Java, this is how the main function always starts out. Nothing really to worry about. So the following statement is going to create a new object called of the from the puppy class. Let's call it oh, and when you're creating a new object variable, instead of using a type of int or string, float, etc., whatever you want, the type of the variable is going to be the object that you created. So you're going to be creating a new variable of type puppy. And you write the word new and then the name of the class again. And then there's one parameter, it's name. So let's give the puppy a name. Let's call it Bob. So when we go ahead and execute this program, pup's name is Bob. And now you can also use more parameters for this. You can give it as many as you want. Let's give it another parameter called um, breed. And to add more variables, you just add a comma outside the quotation marks and put in the next parameter. Let's make this puppy a boxer. That's what my dog is, so. Here you go. Pup's name is Bob, breed is boxer. So that's essentially a basic overview of classes for you guys. But we're going to do one more thing here and show you guys how to access instance variables and really what instance variables are. So now this is a type, I don't even really need this thing up here. Let's go ahead and create variable age. Pop age. And that's going to just be declared. It's not going to be assigned a value right now because that's something that um, hypothetically the user would be able to assign. So we can leave the pup's name and breed thing here, but we're going to need to create another method inside the class puppy up here that will be able to assign the age. So we're going to go public void set age. We're going to be taking an integer as a parameter because age will be just an integer number. And we're going to set the variable pup age to age right here. And now keep in mind that this age variable will not be able to be accessed from outside this method. It's an instance variable. So here we go. So now whenever you call, whenever you um, access pup age from other places in the pro program, it will be equal to whatever set age is. So we're going to go down here, and we're going to give the puppy an age and access it. It's basically the 
it won't be really anything foreign to you guys, just another way to access variables. So we're gonna go, we already called new pup, so we're gonna go new pup dot set age. And let's give it an age of one, because, you know, it's a new puppy, it can be one. And now we're going to print that out, so. Now to access this variable, you're going to refer to the instance of the class you called its name. So new pup, then dot pup age. Okay. Now let's just finish off this sentence. See if this works. Missed a space there. Pup is there. We go. All right, so there you go, guys. That's basically a working knowledge of classes for you right there. That's going to be an aspect of Java that's very useful for you guys, and for the matter, any programming or any programming language you do throughout your careers.